Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. Today we are going to continue to look at differences between areas and volumes. This is part two. So let's get started. In the last episode we looked at when we refer to area, so in this case we have an irregular shape which is drawn on a piece of paper. The area is for two-dimensional shapes. So two-dimensional shapes have areas. We saw that. These shapes are also referred to as plane figures because we can draw them in a piece of paper which is two dimension. And when we say area, we refer to as the amount of space which is enclosed within the shape or the figure as highlighted in blue and also these stripes. So similarly, when we talk about volume, so this is a shape where we basically took the shape and we dragged it straight up. We got this shape. So volume, when we refer to volume, we are referring to three-dimensional shapes. So this is a very important difference. Two-dimensional shapes have areas and three-dimensional shapes have volumes. Important to note that two-dimensional shapes cannot have volume. So the third dimension, the extra dimension is really this height. Right? It is this height that is added that adds the third dimension. Height often referred to as uppercase lowercase h. So Three, dimension, three dimensional shapes have volumes. These shapes are also referred to as solids. Sometimes you will see them referred to as solids. And when we talk about volume, again, it is the same thing as area, that is the amount of space which is occupied inside this. But we use sometimes also the term capacity to refer to the same. And also one important point is when we talk about volume of, say, this particular shape, it can also be expressed as the amount of gas which can be filled in into the solid or the amount of liquid which can be filled in into this solid. Now in this episode we are going to take a look at it a little bit differently. So now let's assume this is a room. It could be your any room in your home or it could be your school, your classroom. And now let us say this is me inside your classroom. right? And now we are going to give ourselves objective. We want to paint this room. So now what we will do is that when we want to paint a room, we need to know how many walls are there. So well, there is this wall on my, so this is me. So this is on my left side and this is on my right side because I'm facing you. So I'm facing this direction. So this is on my left side, the wall here. This is the wall on my right side. So I need to paint these two walls. Right. Similarly, I also have to paint the wall which is behind me. And yes, as you would have guessed it, I have to also paint the wall which is in front of me. Right. So I, we talked about four walls. One wall shown in yellow, the other one shown in yellow. So two opposite walls. Similarly, the one which is the back of me and the wall which is in the front of me shown in blue. Correct. And let's just say that we want to paint also the ceiling and the floor. So here the ceiling is shown in red and similarly this one will be also red. Correct? So whenever we want to paint a room, we are dealing with area. This is very important to understand, right? Because whenever we are looking to paint a room, area of an object, now, in this case, we are talking about, we are taking a three-dimensional object, in this case, this particular room, which is in a form of a cuboid, right? So, when we talk about area of a three-dimensional shape, what we are talking about is the area of the object is equal to the space occupied by the boundary or the surface of the object. This is very important to understand. So when we have, let me repeat this again. So we are taking, we are looking at a three-dimensional object and when we want to paint the three-dimensional object, we cannot paint the vacuum inside the three-dimensional object. We have to paint the boundaries of the three-dimensional object, right? So the area of the three-dimensional object will be equal to the space which is occupied by the boundary or the surface of the object. So that is going to be the area of the three-dimensional object. So this is very important to keep in mind. Whenever you think about how to find out the area of an object, think about if I have to paint that object. So what is the 
total surface area that I have to apply the paint on. So that is what is going to give you the area of the object. Now, what about the volume? Now, here I'm standing in the, in, in the room and suddenly some mysterious gas is filling the room. So, and obviously as the gas fills the room and I'm feeling dizzy and I faint. Hopefully not in real life, but so the gas has filled up the whole room. Right? Now, this gas which has filled up the entire room is going to be the volume of the room or the volume of the object. So in other words, whenever you think about volume of an object, think about the gas or a liquid that can fill up the inside of the object. So in other words, volume of a volume of an object, right? When we talk about volume of an object, volume of an object is the space which is occupied by the object or amount of space which is inside the object. This is very important. So again, very quickly, so area will be the, the surface or the boundary of the object and volume will be the amount of space which is inside the object. 